evening. Winter sucks. I despise winter. These last few days have been especially thick in these parts. I don't think it went above zero the whole weekend. I long for the day when I can get out of this bitter climate. Besides sucking, in general, winter can have an effect on crime. Have you thought about how it could? You have to be mentally ill to want to live in a place like Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois. If you're mentally ill, you're often more likely to commit crime. Mentally ill people can't control themselves as well as so-called sane people. As they say, we hear about a lot of cases where people who are mentally ill in some way commit crime. Some people say all criminals are mentally ill by virtue of committing crimes. You would think, thus, there would be a greater amount of crime in colder parts. I have read that in North Minneapolis, a place that sounds like a cesspool, the crime rate is four times what the average is nationwide. Sometimes the mentally ill are actually less threatening. Some mentally ill people are self-destructive. Thus, they won't destroy you. They're too busy destroying themselves. They hate themselves. Or perhaps they get thrills from hurting themselves. They may not get thrills from hurting others. Some mentally ill people want to withdraw and be in places of seclusion. In such conditions, they're far less likely to commit crimes. What type of person lives in the North? Generally, weak losers. If you're a weak loser, you may want to commit crimes, but you'll probably suck at committing crimes. You probably won't be any good. The strong losers are living in other places. Think about it, if you're a cool gangbanger, you want to go hang out in Minnesota or Wisconsin? Probably not. If you're a cool gangbanger, you want to go to Dallas, Fort Worth, Los Angeles, New York, Miami, Phoenix. You name it, but not Minnesota, Wisconsin. Besides the Twin Cities, Minnesota has little. The Twin Cities are indeed a major metropolitan area. Taking those away, you have Duluth. I'm oh, a king, but I'm going to Duluth. Rochester, give me a break. Mankato. St. Peter, Wisconsin even worse. Milwaukee is a tough city. Madison, so-so. After Madison, you got nothing. Prattville, Eau Claire, La Crosse, Evans Point, Black River Falls, River Falls. What a joke. I want to go hang out with the cows. No, game bakers don't think like that. Thus, you would think gangbangers would go to more temperate climates. Sociology actually has something to say about this. I read in one textbook that there is a correlation between crime rates and temperature up to a certain point. The book said once it gets 
really, really high climb plateaus or goes down. But generally, as the temperature rises, so does crime. We both argue, for example, when the weather is warm, people are more likely to be out, they're more likely to be active, thus commit crime. While when it's really cold, people are less likely to be out. For personal observations, this seems to hold true. When I'm out and about during the cold months, there's hardly anybody also out and about. A lot of people get in their cars, but not that many people are outside. Although I hate the winter, I don't want to stop me. I probably hate it more than most people do, yet it seems to stop me the least. I run all year round. I ran both days this miserable weekend. It's often so cold in the cold areas that you barely want to be out there, much less stick around to commit crime. I even feel more secure about leaving my bike out. In a metropolitan area like this, it can be awfully foolish to leave a bike out, especially during the night. It'll be snatched up in a moment. After all, it has even happened to me. But when it's literally cold, criminals want to get to the heat just like anybody else. So they don't want to stick around and try to take your bike off. I feel a sense of inner peace when it is warm. I don't prefer extreme heat, but to me it's much better than extreme cold. Extreme heat doesn't bother me as much as it does most people. It seems like a lot of other people hate the heat more than they hate the cold. You can hear people come out and say that. <laughs> Ideally, I think a great temperature is anywhere between 60 and 80 degrees. When a temperature is in that range, I feel this sense of inner peace. When you feel a sense of inner peace, you're not very likely going to commit a crime. People who have inner peace generally don't commit crimes. It's the people who have terrible inner turmoil that commit crimes. Certainly not everybody is the same. I have noticed that one terrible consequence of beautiful weather is a lot of losers and scummy, scuzzy people come out. You'll be out enjoying a walk on a beautiful day only to have some losers in a car pass by and yell remarks at you. I hear it's even worse for women. Since our society teaches idiots like that to objectify women. Sometimes these losers even throw objects at you. I have had items thrown at me. When it's really cold, these losers stay inside. Sometimes it's really cold, so they don't want to even roll down their windows to shout stupid remarks. Then they mutter these remarks under their breath, but not actually shout them out. But wind can have an effect. Even warm wind can affect crime. But cold wind can affect it even more. I'm a biker. I hate biking against the wind like most bikers do. Oftentimes it is necessary to either get somewhere or to get away from somewhere. But on occasion you do have a choice. What if you are a criminal? The wind is going one way. Do you go with the wind 
or go against the wind. What if your best option for a getaway is biking against the wind? It may be harder, it may take longer, but it will get you to safety. If the wind is cold, that makes it worse yet. What if going with the wind will get you going much more quickly, but, and this is the big but, the cops, or perhaps local anti-crime vigilantes are waiting for you. If you're a lazy criminal or a weak criminal, you may choose an option that will lead to your apprehension. If you're a date rapist, you may like the summer breeze, but the winter breeze can be another story. Cold winter winds could wind burn your face, thus making you less attractive to potential victims. You would probably have to slip in the date rape drugs much more quickly. In other circumstances, you can whine and dine a victim, put on a charm, If you're a prostitute, the wind burn could really put a cramp in your style because it could destroy your face. Even if it's a minor ripple, that can still be bad for prostitutes as it is bad for date rapists. The weapons you use can be affected by the wind. Buddhists have an analogy for karma, a boomerang in the wind. What if you are a criminal and you want to hurt somebody by throwing a boomerang? Depending on the direction of the wind and the strength, the boomerang could come right back at you and knock you down. It's bad enough when it's a boomerang, but what if it's a spike you're throwing? What if you're throwing a shards of glass? If you forget about the direction of the wind, it could be bad news for you. never be strong enough to really affect how guns fire. I imagine the velocity of bullets is so quick that even strong winds can't alter them much. But who knows? Maybe firing bullets during Hurricane Katrina would have been fuel. Maybe firing bullets by tsunami winds would be futile. If you hit someone with nunchucks and the wind blows them, they could blow them back in your face. If you're trying to steal money from somebody, the wind could blow the money away. Sometimes strong gusts of wind can throw a person back. Usually the wind isn't strong enough to actually carry you away or to move you too far, but it can put you off balance for a moment. Pretend you are trying to grab a victim. Then a gust of wind happens. It could throw you back and the victim would be able to get away. The actual temperature could make a huge difference on crime. 
This last weekend, I didn't deal with a problem I haven't dealt with for a while. My faith law goals. It was hard for me to get it open, but fortunately all the times I didn't deal with it, I did get it open. Do you think a criminal is wanting to stay there to break it? Good luck, criminal. Good luck. It's too cold to bother with. Plus, you need an awfully good luck device to pick it with. The same goes for any type of lock or door. During winter, it all freezes, especially when it's below zero. A lot of scenarios could result. Sometimes when it's cold, objects can crack. What if you have a gun? It may be so cold that the bullets crack. This could be advantageous or disadvantageous. The bullets could be more potent. If they have two prongs instead of one prong, it could be double the trouble. On the other hand, they may not function at all. They may lose their gunpowder. Also, they may jam in the gun. I imagine there's some temperature at which guns lock up. You won't be able to move anything. If bike locks freeze, wouldn't guns also freeze? Frost and ice can also accumulate on a handle of a gun. A gun can slip out of your hand. You can misfire and shoot yourself in the foot. Or perhaps shoot someone you didn't want shot. You can shoot a cop by mistake. If you shoot some dirtbag loser, we all know the consequences are different than shooting a cop. Builds on my face. Frost can thus be an extra layer of protection. Gun bullets are awfully fierce, so they can probably penetrate through that. But a little extra layer could be the difference between life and death. We've all heard stories about how a Bible in a pocket saved someone's life. Perhaps a little frost could do that too. If an actual sheet of ice forms, that could be all the better for the potential victim. If the weather prevents you from using guns, you can always fall back on knives. Sure, knives are not as glamorous and glorious as guns, and certainly not as contemporary. But what can you do sometimes? Some of the same issues that arise in the winter with guns can arise with knives. The handle could be so full of ice and frost that it slips out of your hand. The blade could crack open. Again, that could be good or bad. It would be extra potent, but perhaps it wouldn't be as usable. The blade could fall off of the knife, and then your whole point would be rendered useless. Bullets can penetrate a lot, but it's tougher for knives to penetrate. If a bullet can penetrate frost and ice, maybe a knife couldn't. You have to plunge awfully hard. Plus, during the cold, people's Tricks. Thus, a knife 
life would have to work a lot harder. If a knife fails, you have your fist, right? But don't think that is a no-fail option. When it's cold, you have gloves on. Certainly that's more comfortable for your hand, but that prevents the blow from being as effective. Bare-fisted boxing is much more dangerous than boxing with gloves. Plus, it may get so cold that your fist locks in the air. You don't want to hit a layer of ice with your fist. Rapists have to worry about it. the cold. The cold really crafts their style. Traditional rapists will go outside and see a victim, perhaps in the dark, and rape the person outside in the elements. It's all fine and dandy for a rapist if it's done during the warm months, but if it's done during the cold months, it's a different story. A rapist may not care about his or her victim, but the rapist probably cares about his or herself. Plus, a rapist may not want to expose his or her body to the elements, especially his or her tender parts. Plus, when it's cold, it's much harder to get an erection. You have to rush the sex, and that makes it less enjoyable. Nonviolent criminals even have to worry about the weather. Prostitutes need cold weather like they need the cops coming after them. Prostitutes stand on street corners. This is great when the weather is nice. When the weather is not so nice, it's a different story. When the weather is not so nice, it's uncomfortable to stand out. I know and have been told from doing protests and similar events outside that it's one deal to walk outside when it's 30 degrees, but it's another deal to stand in place. I've heard that movement makes a big difference. Certainly prostitutes can move back and forth, but that looks awfully dorky. They like to stand in place and show up. Prostitutes also really need to show off parts of their body. When it's really cold, it's bad enough to be out there. It's worse yet when you have to expose your bare flesh. You need to expose your bare flesh to attract customers. But it's so cold. The customers probably don't want to stand out there. So what can you do? I imagine prostitution goes very far down when the weather gets cold. One crime I commit all the time is going to the bathroom in public. I had a terrible criminal put me away for life. I have to have a weak bladder, and when you run, it's often hard to control going to the bathroom. I try to go in secluded places such as behind trees and bushes, but it's still probably technically illegal. Fortunately, I've never had a problem with that. Most people have said 
nature doesn't discriminate. Because no matter who you are, nature will treat you the same. This is so utterly true. Whether you have criminal intentions or you are a law-abiding citizen, it doesn't matter. You expose too much of your skin to too much of the cold, you get frosted. If you stand outside too long during extremely cold temperatures, you get hypothermia. Hypothermia can definitely put an end to a criminal's career. Some people die from hypothermia. Also, if you're shivering from cold or your body is going into a state of shock, you're probably not going to commit crime. On the other hand, if you're about to die, whatever criminal inhibitions you had previously may be gone entirely unless you may be more likely to commit crime. You may lose your ability to see reality accurately as you may commit more crime. Frostbite is not as serious as hypothermia, but it's still awfully horrible. If you get frostbitten in the fingers, you won't be able to grab guns as well, or you won't be able to grasp punch as well. If you get frostbitten in the toes, you won't be able to run away as well. or prostitute and get frostbitten in the face just like it is with windburn, you may not attract potential partners. If you are a traditional rapist, getting frostbitten will really cramp your style. You may not be able to feel anything down there. Thus, you may lose your desire to rape. Some people say rape is not about sex, it's about power. And if it is, even if you can't feel anything, you may still rape. But what if that part of your body falls off from frostbite? That could be awful for you. When I was in elementary school, the cool kids didn't wear jackets. Or at least tried not to. If they did wear jackets, they tried going without hats and gloves. They thought they were tough. But I think it's really stupid. I am not a fan of hats and gloves and jackets. I really wish I could go without them. They're a burden. They make me look dorky. It's hard to look good when you're wearing hats and gloves. Still, when it's really, really cold, I want to stay warm. Sometimes, I think it's more important to stay warm than to look cool. When I got to high school, people had different opinions about jackets, I found out. Often in high schools, even when it's warm, people want to wear jackets. Some jackets are gang symbols or otherwise fashion statements. Many schools, like the school I went to, had rules against coats. Still, kids try to wear them. At my school, some teachers were strict on the coats, others would let you get by with wearing coats. I've never been in 
through the starter jackets that game bringers like. But when I was in high school, I did wear a controversial type of jacket, a judge coat. I even gave a lecture about all the negative associations that have arisen with trench coats. I wore my trench coat during senior year of high school. I stopped wearing it right before I went to college. The timing was almost ideal. It was purely coincidental. Because in 1998, the year after I graduated, something happened in Colorado. Who knows if I would have gotten blamed for that. I have heard of schools banning trench coats. in water climates had an advantage with the coats. When it's cold out, everyone's wearing jackets. Thus, you can wear jackets without sticking out. You can parade your top game being style and yet stay warm. You can also conceal items really well. In these parts, it's cold about six months of the year. Thus, you can wear your big bulky jacket six months out of the year without arousing too much suspicion. If you're a game bringer in the South, you look awfully foolish wearing a thick jacket when it's 100 degrees out. Here to be one. I opened the door 
just a tad and then I closed it. I went away. I was also exploring some that day too. I was by this residential area. Some trailer courts. Then, four cops came after me. Soon enough they found out I was just going for a run. I even had a map with me to show them. We argued about searches. We argued about disorderly conduct. One cop said, you have no rights. The other said, you have no rights until I say you have rights. I don't think that's how this country works. I told them, it's cold. I'm wearing a ski mask because it's cold. They said, we're right by that city. He was referred to Rockford. And some of the crime still is over. Give me a break. Stillman Valley has maybe 5,000 or 7,000 people. Byron has 3,500. My dad leader said, it's just like Mayberry. Eventually, they let me go. small town life for you. One time I walked into a Quill's grocery store with my face mask still on. The person in there asked me to remove the face mask. I did. I didn't really feel like removing it, but I did anyways. At least that was a better reaction than me jerk calling the cops. I guess those people there have so little excitement in their life that anything that even resembles excitement provokes them to extreme action. Fortunately, in a metropolitan area like this, I see people wearing face masks often enough. Even when it's really cold, not everyone wears a face mask, but at least some people do. I've even seen people wear face masks, get on the bus, and keep the face mask on. Some people wear bandanas to cover their face. You look like a bandit doing that, but I think it's a good way to keep warm. Sometimes right before my stop, I get myself ready and put on a mask. You would think, no big deal. But in some of these small areas, I guess it is a big deal. What are the consequences for drug dealers? I imagine there's some point at which drugs freeze. Thus, drugs do not work in the same way. Maybe they're more potent, maybe they're less. But they're not going to move around in the same way. If you're a drug dealer, you could perhaps mix some snow with your cocaine. You probably don't want to mix too much, as even though cooking and snow are both white, they are very different. But you can probably mix a little in there to dilute your product. Drug dealers want to dilute products because pure drugs are expensive. Drug dealers like prostitutes need to go outside on street corners. Do you really want to wait around? Will your customers want to wait around? It's tough. But maybe if you're a drug dealer, you have a PMA, positive mental attitude. Maybe you are what Zig Ziglar calls a can-do person. You don't care about the weather. You're going to think positive thoughts. I will sell drugs today. I will, I will, I will. Your drugs would blow away with strong winter wind. That would be bad for a drug dealer. Something interesting happened when I watched this court case in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. This drug dealer was being sentenced. He could have committed his crime in winter, or at least some of his crimes. The prosecutor told one bit that was supposed to make this drug dealer look especially bad. 
this drug dealer, he said, Daddy was so sophisticated that he wrapped up a paperback book and gave it to someone as drugs. It was winter you could wrap up a paperback book, put snow around, the person would think the snow is cocaine, and run with it. If you're getting their drugs, you want to get there and out. You don't want to examine them, so it could really work in the winter. I don't understand why that makes a drug dealer look bad. It probably makes the drug dealer look good in my eyes. After all, the drug dealer is not giving away drugs, at least as much. What paperback book did he get? Was it The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? Chicken Soup for the Soul? Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? Paperback version? some great inspiration to the drug user. Maybe the paperback book was the Atkins Diet. As we have seen, winter can definitely affect crime in ever so many ways. Good evening.